Haki is one of the worst power systems in all of anime. Whoa, 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 what? I mean, Haki is still pretty meh, but still what? Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. And today we are getting a bit spicy because my audience have opinions and I am going to be subjected to them. Opinions about One Piece specifically, a near universally praised series, the highest selling comic book of all time by a single author, blah, 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 you know the stuff. However, do any of those things make One Piece perfect? No, definitely not. And so I asked to hear your most unpopular opinions regarding the series in an effort to find the most unpopular opinion in the One Piece fandom. And I think that we have some pretty decent contenders here today, like subscribing to the Grand Line Review, which will result in a regular injection of One Piece culture administered straight into your YouTube feed. And personally, I don't think that's wildly controversial, but apparently a good 55% of you do. So let's start changing that. And please do say hi in the comments below if you are a new member of the Grand Fleet. Welcome. But we will now begin our quest, the quest to find the worst take in the One Piece fan base. And so let's begin immediately with, it's okay to like both Zoro and Sanji. <laughs> <laughs> uh, get out. No, but seriously, it's definitely okay to like both of them, but we do need to like one of them just a little bit more, the, uh, the green one specifically. No, but seriously, seriously, you are free to like whoever you want. And Zoro fans, please stop assaulting the Sanji stands with all of Zoro's achievements. It just gets a bit old after a while. It's like a fully grown adult bragging about beating a toddler in an uh, insert sport of your choice. We get it, Zoro can fight good. It's literally like the only thing he can do. Of course he's gonna be good at it. But Sanji is good at many things. He's a very useful lad. Smoker was never strong and never will be Luffy's guard. Luffy just couldn't touch him because of his DF. Yeah, I don't know about that. Smoker is, I would say, reasonably strong. Although he has been on a pretty rough losing streak post time skip. I mean, he lost to Trafalgar Law, Caesar Clown, Vice Admiral Virgo, and Dolphamingo, all of which happened in the space of exactly one arc, actually. <laughs> oh, Smoker. Oh, you really do suck quite a bit, don't you? Manga readers tend to over-exaggerate the badass of the anime adaptation, I think he means to say badness. While certainly not perfect, it is a great way to experience the story and has some great fight animations. Ah, so this is probably an unpopular opinion for manga readers, which, uh, well, that'd be me. And yeah, I definitely include myself in that. In the past, I've been pretty incredibly harsh on the anime, but to be fair, it does kind of deserve it. I don't know, what do you want me to say? Am I supposed to think it's a good thing that Toei is artificially dragging out the series simply in order to fit an outdated business model for a purely profit motive? However, I will say that the anime has gotten significantly better in the Wano era, and there are definitely times where it's even superior to the manga. So there we go, that's probably an unpopular opinion of my own right there. I preferred when the show's main power were the devil fruits rather than Haki. Yeah, I think I agree with this actually. Haki is interesting and I I would definitely argue that it was a necessary development given how long One Piece has become, but I really do dislike how Devil Fruit seemed to be more or less a bit of a side feature post time skip, and the focus is predominantly on Haki. I mean, even now, several balls deep into Wano, the focus is on Luffy leveling up his Haki to hit good old K Dogs rather than being forced to be creative with his fruit powers like the pre time skip era. Haki is one of the worst power systems in all of anime. Whoa, 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 what? I mean, Haki is still pretty meh, but still what? All right, look, as much as I don't think it's anywhere near as great as Devil Fruits were, Haki is, uh, it's still pretty all right. It is a solid pass. It gives us enough variety to explore the concept for uh, half a thousand chapters and not get entirely bored with it. So I do have to give it that, especially when you consider stuff like say the Dragon Ball power system, which is just, you know, I have more power key, so I win. Or the Bleach system where most of the time it's, well, I have more power Ryatsu, so I win. And when you think about it, Yu-Gi-Oh's entire power system was just the ability to cheat a card game, so. <laughs> Shanks giving up his arm for the future still looks like a major plot hole to me. And you know, I don't know if plot hole is, uh, is uh, quite the right word. Mostly because hole better describes the injury that Ace received and not the one that Shanks received. I do sort of agree though, like it's always a bit strange to look back on that event because it really probably shouldn't have happened. The deeper we go into One Piece and the higher the power creep becomes, the weirder the event is in retrospect. And no, Shanks was not an emperor of the sea at the time, but even then he should have been able to negate the Lord of the Coast quite simply, considering that's exactly what Luffy could do at the very start of his journey. My only real explanation is that One Piece was intended to be so short at that stage that this imbalance of power was never supposed to manifest. If One Piece had run as planned, then I don't think this would be an issue. Thriller Bark is underrated and the fans, including you, 
do it dirty. I think it is heavily underrated though, and I will admit to being part of that problem, sorry. Thriller Bark is definitely enjoyable, one might even say amazing in isolation. However, in context with the rest of the series, it just doesn't quite do enough for me to warrant it being anywhere near as long as it is. It's 48 chapters, so it took over a year to publish in real time, and all of the really amazing stuff happens in like the last quarter of that. Plus it gets very unfortunately sandwiched by Water 7 on one side and Sarpa Archipelago on the other, both of which were huge landmark moments in the series. So Thriller Bark does end up looking worse than it actually is, simply through the destructive power of a juxtaposition. Nami forgave Jinbei far too easily. Ooh, that's a spicy opinion. I'm not sure I've heard before. It's a pretty complex issue actually, because in the end, Jinbei is directly responsible for Nami's entire terrible childhood. He actively made sure to use his power as a warlord to free Arlong, a man he knew had a violent hatred for humanity, as well as a profound lust to enact that violence. And Jinbei just, you know, went and let him do his own thing. I mean, really, what did Jinbei think Arlong was going to do? Settle down and have some sort of nice kawaii shark fan? Family. Then again, we do have to say that the one ultimately responsible will always be Arlong. Still, at the very least, it was gross negligence and I guess general incompetence on the part of Jinbei. So yeah, it's a surprisingly complicated relationship that Nami and Jinbei have, although you don't pick up on that at all during Hawkeye Island, where the two just seem like good old besties. Absolutely no character could beat three admirals at the same time, not even Roger at his peak. Uh, oh no, this, this is a dangerous opinion. I mean, it's almost like a whole video topic in and of itself. You know, something clickbaity like, can one emperor defeat three admirals or the other way around? And without thinking about it too deeply, I'm not actually sure what the outcome would be. Because here's the thing. As much as I know that a lot of people might disagree with this thought, the entirety of the marine organization plus the warlords are roughly equal to the power of one emperor of the sea and their extended forces. And the admirals are referred to as the world government's greatest military powers. So could all three of them equate to one Kaido, Big Mom, Whitebeard or Shanks? And my answer is maybe, to be honest. Although I do think it's a bit of a stretch to say that absolutely nobody could beat all three of them. Interesting topic though, I might file that away for a future video. Bon Clay should have joined the Straw Hats. Ah, that is not an unpopular opinion, surely not. He would be such a great addition, especially interacting with Frankie because both he and Bon Clay have the same voice actor, Kazuki Yao. What powers do Milk have? And this, this isn't even an opinion. It's not even a particularly good question. But if I must answer, Milk in One Piece has magical healing properties that negate the need for dentistry or any kind of bone restoration if you just happen to be a skeleton of some sort, which can happen. Unpopular opinion. The show wasn't any good at all until Baratier or Arlong Park. Mm, okay, I would be legitimately interested to know if this is actually unpopular. Be honest with me, Grand Fleet. How many of you were absolutely in love with One Piece prior to Baratier? Because I can tell you that I definitely wasn't. For most of my One Piece fan career, I've held the belief that it really takes getting to Arlong in order to see the potential of what this series is. Although in my later years, I have been convinced that point is actually Baratier. If you're not convinced by then, then eh, Arlong's probably not gonna help. However, to say it wasn't good at all until then is uh, well, I definitely disagree. Romance Dawn, Orange Town, and yes, even Syrup Village all showed great amounts of fun comedy, cool action, and surprisingly deep drama. I mean, you cannot look at this good boy and tell me that One Piece wasn't made decent the moment he showed up. I felt very little when the Mary died. Ah, uh, ah, uh, you sir are a monster. But really, look, that's not the first time I've heard this. I mean, personally, I was surprised when a sailing vessel made me shed tears for the first time when I saw it in the manga, but we all get our heartstrings tugged by different things. Although I'd be more concerned if nothing at all in One Piece did that to you. Because at that stage, uh, look, you're probably a sociopath. The Auras of Haki is an amazing addition. Aha, uh -huh, so here I think we're referring to the Wano anime and their, uh, well, their very liberal artistic depiction of Haki. Currently, I'm kind of on the sidelines about this myself. On the one hand, I do think it changes the impression of a lot of these hockey scenes and characters look like they're performing much more epic feats than they are in reality. On the other hand, for most of my adult life, I've been complaining that the anime keeps removing things from the manga in order to make the animation transition easier. So when they actually do try to do their own thing and add something through the medium of animation, I think I do fall on the side of supporting it because at least it shows that they have some sort of artistic ambition. Shanks is the final villain. All right, so this is a theory that I must admit I did kind of used to like. Uh, then I stopped and thought about it for like, 
a second. Evil Shanks is a fun idea, I won't deny that. It's just, oh, it would change everything in One Piece. And I really don't think that with the solid connective tissue between Luffy, Roger, and Shanks, that he's going to turn out to be some sort of ultimate antagonist. He was given Roger's straw hat for a reason, and therefore Shanks is probably a good boy. Not as good as Choo Choo, but well, no one is. The Saga King is an Usopp joke stopped being funny 10 years ago. <laughs> Uh, it's so true. All right, here's some behind the scenes information about how my YouTube mind works. If you're in the comment section and you post an Usopp Saga King joke, then that is probably one of the like three things that I will never ever heart or respond to. And exactly why is that? Well, because it's a lazy joke. The joke's been told before. I've been hearing it for quite literally almost 15 years now. And I think that we can do better. In fact, I know that we can do better. So maybe let's just try to extend our ambition a bit further into some new Mimi jokes. Whoop Slap is the best character in One Piece. Aha, uh -huh, agreed. So please do vote for my friend, your friend, our friend, Whoop Slap in the world top 100 character poll. I still don't understand why, but most of this fan base wanted Vivi to join the crew. She literally offers nothing to the crew. The weakest crew member would be her, and I'm not sure she can even deal with any NW fodder. Yeah, I don't know. I think you could have said the same thing about Nami and Usopp during the Alabasta days. All Oda has to do is give Vivi her own power up, like Usopp's weapons or Nami's climb attack, and we're pretty much all good to go. The way women are drawn mostly in the anime is annoying because their proportions are so ridiculous that they don't to even look attractive. Hang on a minute, are you trying to tell me that Planet Tit Anime Viola is not attractive? Because you're right. I'm not going to lay the blame entirely on the anime though, because Oda's proportions are also wildly unrealistic, but the anime does traditionally take it to a whole new level of just weird. Law is an idiot for not just constantly removing hearts from people when he fights. Like it's a one hit KO. Yeah, look. Oda kind of dug himself a bit of a hole with Law. There is very, very little reason why he can't do just about anything. The only excuse is Haki, but that character has to be using Haki at the time time to stop Law, and given the ridiculous range of his powers, he should be able to do something like take Kaido's heart without the Emperor even noticing that Law is on Onigashima or something along those lines. Law is simply broken, and the best Oda can do is kind of just forget to use him. Odin called Buggy, Buggy Jiro, second son, because Buggy's mama was his side piece. Toki was his one piece. But dum tsh. All right, I think we found what we're looking for. We are done here. And if you'd like to see some more unpopular One Piece opinions, then please do feel free to check out the Unpopular Opinions playlist. Some very spicy stuff over that way, and I look forward to seeing you there.